الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله حبيب وخليل اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا قوا انفسكم واهليكم نارا قال الله عز وجل في مقام اخر انما اموالكم واولادكم فتنه واتقوا الله عنده اجر عظيم قال الله عز وجل المال والبنون زينه الحياه الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير املا وقال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا مات الانسان ان قطع عمله الا من ثلاثه الا من صدقه جاريه او علم ينتفع به او ولد صالح يدعو له او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد my respected elders honorable brothers and sisters contemporary youth assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Islam is a way of life. We always hear, read and follow we say five pillars of Islam. Alhamdulillah, we have to be thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has made us Muslim. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has made us in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah five pillars of islam these are essential and these are our fundamental practices but islam is not only five pillars of islam these are our, our obligations islam is a way of life in islam everything is rights are well preserved Islam based on hukukullah and hukukul ibad rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of his creation so when we talk about rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five pillars of Islam mostly we discuss we learn we talk about but at the same time we must understand we have obligations we have responsibilities that we have to fulfill the rights of his creation ibad rights of of his servants allah taala has blessed us with many bounties and favors wa in ta'uddu ni'mat allah la tuhsuha If we would like to count the favors of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala we will not be able to number them so many bounties and favors so one of the bounty of and the favor of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala bless us with children this is one of the bounty and favor of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala now when we are blessed with children it is our responsibility we have to be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time we have obligations we have responsibilities to take care of this bounty of allah taala is very important 
It's just a reminder. Nothing new, but it's a reminder. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind. Because a reminder is always beneficial. So what I'm going to try to say here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us children, and especially in this environment, in this society, where the peer pressure, a temptation, lots of challenges that we are facing regarding our children. So what are our responsibilities? This is a question. How we deal, how we tackle these challenges that we are facing today, so that we have to tackle, we have to check it, and how we deal these challenges, and what are the right ways. On one hand, when we say, Ya yeah Allah, we thank you that you, are, that you have blessed us with children. Alhamdulillah. And the first responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu, oh you who believe, what of? You yourself first, anfusakum wa ahlikum and your family. From what? From the fire of Jahannam. You are responsible. You are responsible to save yourself and your family. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Your wealth and your children are trial for you. And also at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا Your wealth and your children are adornment for you in this life. But when these children are pious, they have a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to be thankful. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are thankful what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I will give you more blessings. You don't necessarily have to be more children. Blessings. Allah will make your children more pious. They will have a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will give you more blessings. Allah will give you more. But if you are ungrateful, Allah Ta'ala says, my punishment is severe. Now what to do? Right from the beginning, scholars, muhaddithin, mufassireen, sahaba ikan azmanullah ta'ala majma'een, tabi'een, they have outlined, right from the beginning, when Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala blesses someone with baby boy or baby girl, so the first thing that we have to do, highly recommended, call Adhan, say Akama, and preferably Atika, give the beautiful name right from the beginning. When the child reads at the age of four, or he could say, teach him the word Allah, and when he reads at the age of seven, Sabahasinin, teach them how to pray. When they reach at the age of 10, be strict. Make them regular. No excuse. Because when they reach at the age of puberty, after that, no excuse. The training started. Who is going to give them training? Parents. Because, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum. You are the responsible. Parents are the responsible. They have to give them training. So training started. Give them proper education. And first, we have to fulfill our responsibilities. 
then we have to expect from our children that they are going to be respectful. This is one of the challenges that we are facing today. My child is rebellious. He is not giving me respect. He does not listen to me. When I say something to him or to her, in reply, who cares? That's a challenge that we are facing. The question comes, have we fulfilled our responsibilities? Is there any lacking or shortcomings? It reminds me incident in the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. A person came and he complained, Amir al-Mu'mineen, my son is rebellion. He does not respect me. Whenever I say to him, just like that here, who cares? Amir al-Mu'mineen do something. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar radiallahu anhu, he called his son and said, Oh young man, your father has complained. What is it? That you do not respect your father. So Amir al is there any responsibility or right that father has to fulfill regarding me? Regarding his son? He says, yes. What are those? The first thing, select good mother for your children. Select good mother for your children. Second, give them good names. Third thing, teach them Quran. But the son said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he did not fulfill any, any right regarding me. He selected my mother, she is fire worshipper. She is fire worshipper. She is not even Muslim. And second thing, he gave me the name Jo'ul. Means ugly, scrap. And the third thing, he never taught me Quran. Amir al-Mu'mineen, subhanallah. He called his father, you are complaining against your son and you did not fulfill any right regarding your son, you are the responsible. You are the responsible. If we check ourselves today, are we fulfilling his rights? Are we giving a proper training? Uh, education? That the right things that they need a religious and spiritual training, social and moral training, even physical training, these training right from the beginning, we are responsible. When we talk about spiritual and the religious training, Hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, when they reach at the age of 10, be strict, make them regular. In Hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrid means beat them up. But here we cannot do that. Interpretation, because corporal punishment, we are not encouraged. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa never beat anyone in his life. Be strict, make them regular, and give them right education. And with the passage of time, when they are the right ages, right matches, then make environment, make better settlement for them, you know, in, in getting married, get them settled, yes, you are fulfilling your rights somehow. And then we can say that, now I do need in return. You know, it, it goes side by side. First, we have to do something, then we expect from our children. Then these children will become Sadaqa Jariya. Sadaqa Jariya. As hadith of Rasul sallallahu famous hadith, وَإِذَا مَاتَ insan in قَطَعَ amalu. When insan, the son of Adam, dies, leaves this world, all his or her deeds will be disconnected. Means while he was alive or she was alive, they, have, they were doing many activities, they were performing daily salah, performing hajj, giving zakah or fasting in the month of Ramadan or they had a social network, social help. There were many things. They cannot come back to carry on the same activities. But three things will remain. Illa min sadaqatin jariya. 
that the social things that you have done or whatever you have spent in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you built a masajid, hospitals, schools, whatever good you know you have done for the welfare of a human being, you will be rewarded for that. Even you are no longer in this world. Second thing, ilmin yuntafa'ubihi, the knowledge that you have shared with the people. As long as they are benefited, you are going to get reward for that. And the third thing, waladin salihin yad'ulah, righteous children, those who make dua for the parents. How they will, how they will, you know, they will become righteous if we are not fulfilling our rights, if we are not giving them proper right, you know, the proper training. So this is one of the thing that we have to tackle. Now, the parents sometimes they are over strict, or sometimes they are very liberal. They don't care. The parents they don't care. Let alone children they don't care. Or sometimes parents are very strict because this is natural. This is natural. The Allah Subhanahu wa Taala put love in the hearts of the parents for their children. Alhamdulillah, we love our children, but everything has limits. You know, out of this love, now we have to take some responsibilities. And the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam always encouraged: be kind, be compassionate, be loving, caring. This is our attitude that they need. If we are strict, or my way or the highway, then you know what happens? Our children, they always need for love. They will have a better company. And this is our responsibility to provide them a good company. If we cannot provide them good company, they will find other company then. Who knows? So we have to be supervision, supervise them. They have a good company or not? If we cannot provide them, they will find out. And then at the end, what happens if they get into the wrong company, you know, if they adopt wrong friendship, then we are going to cry. As always I mentioned that, most of us, mashallah, alhamdulillah, you know, some of us were born and raised here, but the majority of the people, the immigrants, and we, so we come here to make our life better, to make our children's life better. Now when we face challenges, my daughter or my son, Nauzbillah bin Zalik, he is indulging in drugs. He is rebellion. He, they are not, no, they are not respecting anymore. Parents are selecting something, they are thinking of something else, then becomes life miserable. Our life becomes miserable. Before it's too late, right from the beginning, we have to open up our eyes, provide them good environment. It not necessarily that every child is going to become a hafiz or a alim or, you know, muhaddis or mufakir or, 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 or mufassir. Yes. The basics we all have to fulfill, you know, the basic knowledge, everyone must have it. Because to seek knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim male and female. It's compulsory. For higher education, for specialization, is for the kifaya. Basic we have to provide them. Then at the same time, Today, science and technology is on peak. We need our children be, you know, we would like to see them becoming specialists in different branches of knowledge. We have to tell them the history. For thousand years, Muslims were dominating. Muslims were recognized in science and technology. Now, our children have a huge responsibilities on their shoulders. What happened today, Muslim Ummah, I'm talking about Muslim Ummah. Muslim Ummah is not recognized. Muslim Ummah today is called, they are terrorists, they are radicals, 
extremist, fundamentalist, these names are given. And we have to train our children. Focus. Concentrate. We have to give our children the notion that you have to become productive member of the society. You know, in Islam, that, that time was there. The Muslim what used to be called most honest, most truthful, most trustworthy. What happened to us now? We came with a baggage. We have to train our children. Insha'Allah in the future, our children, they will become models. So if we work harder, then insha'Allah, our children will pay attention and they will become respectful and we can expect from them that they are becoming, they will become a productive member of the society. But first we have to become model. Insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us and for our children. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa kafa, wa salatu ala nabiyyihi ba'da, amma ba'd, fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, wa id akhadna mithaq bani israel, la ta'abuduna illa Allah, wa bil walidin ihsana, sadaqallahu maulana nazim, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana muhammadin, wa ala ala sayyidina maulana muhammadin, wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi. My dear brothers, and sisters in Islam, once if we fulfill our responsibilities, now these responsibilities transfer to our children. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Ala adullukum bi akbaril kabair. Should I not tell you which is most, you know, severe or, or major sin? Sahaba Ikram said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akbarul kabair. Al-Ishraq Billah Wa Uquq Al-Walidayn The major sins are associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala associating partner with Allah and very next is Uquq Al-Walidayn disobedient to one's parents this is Akbar Al-Kabair Wa Iza Khadra Mithaqa Bani Israel La Ta'buduna Illa Allah Wa Bil Walidayn Ihsana and remember when we took covenant from the children of Israel, never associate partner with Allah. La ta'abudun illallah. And very next, wabil waridin ihsana, be good to your parents. Wa qadha rabbuka alla ta'abudu illa iyaah wabil waridin ihsana. Imma yablughanna indakal kibara ahaduhuma au kilahuma fala taqullahuma uff wa la tanharuhuma wa kullahuma qawlan kareemah. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us. If our parents are alive, then these are the things that we have to focus. And remember when I took the covenant, by the khadna, wa qadara buka, Allah Ta'ala and you have decreed that never associate any partner with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and be good to your parents. When one of them or both of them attain old age, do not say uff. What it means uff? Do not say any word of disrespect. Don't be disrespectful to your parents. And never ever shout them. Whenever you address them, be humble. Be kind. You are not going to pay them. And lower the wings of mercy for them. And say, Ya Allah, have mercy upon them both. After they had a mercy upon me when I was young, they raised me up. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad in barik wa salli wa salli alayhi. Allahumma ayyid al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ansur al-Muslimin fi kulli makan. Allahumma ansur al-Muslimin fi kulli makan. 
اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم اللهم اخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرباء وينهى الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وله يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى على مولا وعز وجل وتم وعظ أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاة قد كامت الصلاة قد كامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صبوا 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 صفوكم رحمكم الله تعالى straighten your roots fill up the gap please come shoulder to shoulder check your cell phones جزاك الله خير الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعيد اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله ثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. 
إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ونبي فهم دخير وحمين استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله لا إله إلا الله